Welcome back to the Duke Dome where that is what the Wellington Dukes are playing tonight. That is the Buckland Cup. It is game six. And if Georgetown wins, they're forcing this whole thing, thing back to game seven. I'm Lindsay Heron. I'll be talking to players throughout the game. Wellington's got one more win to go and they rebounded Jason with a huge victory in game number five. Starting goaltenders, there's the man right there for Georgetown. He's been the man pretty much all postseason long. Troy Timpano, see his record there on your screen. 14 wins, 7 losses. Save percentage of 9-17 in 23 games. Down at the other end of the pond is Jonah Capriotti, and he has been the man as well for the Dukes. A guy that is headed off to Trinity College in the Bantams program in Division Three next season. This is his gonna be gonna be his last kick at the can. Off though on the far half boards. Nice passing going on here around the perimeter. Crocker to Payet. Dragon shooting. Back door. Actually, nice pass right over, and McJanet scores. Nice play by Payet just to freeze just a, that little bit and then sweep over to the far side, and McJanet has an open corner to hammer it in as Capriotti was going down. Just waited that little extra split second, and that allowed him to put it up with almost a whole open net staring at him. Well, this but, is... This is expert, expert puck movement there, Payette. He knows that seam is open, and uh, and uh, what a great little pass. Capriotti tasked with sort of looking through uh, a Georgetown Raider uh, there, and uh, one nothing. The shot as Elson plays it back to Payette, who arrives at the left point. Shot tipped through, and they score right through the legs of Jonah Capriotti, and again, the Dukes thought there might have been a high stick on that one, but the Raiders are coming out strong. That little delay seemed to help them. Justin Paul with the deflection, and it's 2-0 Georgetown right off the top, and oh, what a start for this Raider team. Well, those high tips, and that, that to me looks like a good goal. McVeigh uh, way out and uh, deflected it down. That's uh, definitely not questionable like the uh, Raiders' first goal in, uh, in uh, game uh, five. Yetman was late arriving. McJanet. Payette now swung to Elson. Zach Elson can't fight past his Dukes combatant. Now Yetman left all over. Bryce Yetman fires right on to pin on the same rebound. Doyle scores on the rebound. Colin Doyle, 2-1. Raiders are now down up by one. The Dukes are down by just one goal. And the captain coming through again is eight to the playoffs. And Bryce Yetman again just put the puck on the net. Good things will certainly happen and Timpano couldn't control the rebound. Well, credit Noah Lully for holding the line there a couple of times and uh, sort of a dangerous gambit uh, if, you're, uh, if you're the Wellington defender. And then Yetman able to deliver it to the net. McJanet standing there, puck was on his skate for a second. And then uh, not exactly the prettiest goal, but Colin Doyle could not care. So will take over again. Speed showcased here well by the Dukes. Evans fires right on, save, rebound to Pan Runner, save. Another chance and Pucci scores! Frank Pucci ties it up at two goals apiece. 4-25 into period two, and the Brock Badgers commitment has posted his second goal of the game. What a great follow-up. Excellent gumption to determination by number 16. Well, you saw Ben Evans break in, and really this, this play goes south. It looked like Tim Panel was gonna just take this puck in his glove and, and get a whistle here, but he just can't keep his hands on it. And then Mendonca, puck bouncing around, and Pucci right on the doorstep. Nobody picked him going up to the, uh, going up to the bench. And then Martin will exchange, give and go. Saprika, backhand try, still has control. Rolling puck, Saprika scores! Just Saprika, top shelf on the backhand, and the Dukes take the lead, 3-2 going from their failed power play and Josh Saprika again continues to have himself a heck of a postseason as well. The ex-Duke back for one final swan song. Well if you remember the uh, goal that he scored in uh, Aurora in game five of the clincher, sort of the same play. He comes out, lost control of it, waited for Timpano to go down. That's a delay right there. Timpano uh, bites on uh, an, uh, sort of an attempt there and then roof job right up into the back of the net. Ryan Park says that's a goal. During that one just wide, just floated it past the blocking end side of Capriotti, and now they score from the point. Austin Cho rips one through a screen, and we're all tied up again at threes. 1.23 to go in the second. That's a big goal for the Raiders. Well, that seems to be the, uh, the Raiders' M.O. tonight. 
uh, those high uh, those high tips are uh, at least obscuring the uh, obscuring the vision of uh, Jonah Capriotti. Couldn't uh, couldn't see it. We're going to get a look at it here. Let's we'll see if he. I don't know whether he was maybe blocked out by his own player there or. Yeah, that hard to was, tell. That puck was rising. And with five seconds left, looks like game six is going to overtime here in the Buckland Cup final. And you had to kind of feel that was going to happen. And for the second time here at the Duke Dome this postseason, Wellington is going to overtime. We'll take a quick break and come back to you with OT action in the Buckland Cup final. You're watching OJHL postseason action here on the OJHL tonight on your TV, Quinty, also on your TV in the Halton region. Austin. Got it to Mendonca, sent goalward. And there is Pucci. Mendonca swings and misses and got his stick tangled up with a Raider player. This is Snell now at the point. Bet across. Mendonca delays, shoots. Nice blocker save made by Timpano. It rolls around past the referee. Evans, blind feed, they score! Frank Pucci, the game winner, and the Buckland Cup winner, the Wellington Dukes, for the first time in seven years, are the supremacy of the Ontario Junior Hockey League. in 2018, they're going to the Dudley Hewitt in Dryden, Ontario. And what a celebration for the boys on the ice. Unbelievable pass by Ben Evans from behind the net. He just twisted right around, completely duped the Raiders' defense. And Frank Pucci is the hero. He didn't even play the whole season with the Dukes. And he comes through as the hero, Buckwin Cup Heroics for number 16. As we're gonna get a replay of this goal. My goodness, look at this pass from Ben Evans. Check it out. And Frank Pucci had a gimme. He would have had to have been sound asleep to miss that one because Evans just put it straight on the stick, whipped it around in the backhand, and the Wellington Dukes can finally breathe a sigh of relief. They win the Buckland Cup. Welcome back to the Duke Dome, where it took overtime, but the Wellington Dukes have won the Buckland Cup. I'm joined by defenseman Zach Ewins. Zach, you're a young guy, but what does it mean to have a Buckland Cup on your resume? <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. It's awesome. Just for the guys in the room some of the old guys who never get to do this again. It's, <laughs> you can't really put it into words. It's, it's incredible, yeah. Frank Pucci, who scored the overtime goal and now has a dosing of water to show for it. Frank, talk about your game tonight. Uh, well, all the boys came out hard today. We bought in, all, all 20 of us, and we just played an awesome game. You really stepped up in this playoffs with this playoff run, and you came back from a different team. Talk about joining the Wellington Dukes for this playoff stretch. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Talk about joining the Wellington Dukes for this playoff stretch. I'm sorry, I can't. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel, Frank? Awesome. It was an unbelievable feeling, and I can't wait to go to the Dodd. Nice job. Congratulations, Thank Frank. Thank you. The winner of the Big Bats Trophy is the playoff MVP. Your Wellington Dukes, number 17, all in.
on the board, all across the board. It's just been a great final series and a great OJHL season. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as we say so long, we will leave you with the pictures of the Dukes celebrating their first Buckland Cup championship in seven years. Have a good night, and we will see you all again in 2018-19.